Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. <laughs> Begins with a Mishnah, the first new Mishnah in the Masechta since the beginning. And the Mishnah discusses four times of the year in which various things are judged in the world. The Gemara will explain the judgment of crops, and the Gemara will bring four other opinions, perhaps a fifth opinion, as to how the judgment of the world takes place, whether they were four different times, and we want to know which one our Mishnah fits with. Then the Gemara will get into a lengthy Agatha discussing the judgment, how it works, how we do tefillah, based on judgments and ha- uh, the various Yavim Tovim we have help us in the various court cases which we have throughout the year. So let's begin the Mishnah. Mishnah says there are four times in which the world is judged. On Pesach we're judged on grain, on Shavuos we're judged on fruit of the tree, and Rosh Hashanah every person in the world is judged. The expression the Mishnah uses is all people pass in front of him as B'nai Maron, which the Gemara will translate later. In the Pasuk, the Mishnah brings to support that is Hayotze Yachalibam Hamevin is called Maaseim, he who creates their hearts as one and understands all their actions. And the fourth period of judgment is on Sukkis, and that is judgment for water, which means rain. So now the Gemara discusses the judgment of the grain. So the Gemara begins. The Gemara says, Grain, you're telling me, is judged on Pesach. Well, hold on a second. During Pesach time, the grain is already standing in the field. So what do you mean the grain is judged on Pesach? You're talking about this crop of grain? But what about everything that happened up till now? When is the judgment for that? And if you're talking about next year's crop, so uh, that would imply that the only judgment for next year's crop, meaning the grain that you're going to plant in Cheshvan, which is grain planting time, the only judgment for that is then, but uh, that can be, because we have a Bryce that says that there are multiple judgments for grain. Anything which happens to grain until Pesach was decreed in the preceding Pesach. Anything which happens after Pesach during the crop was decreed this Pesach. Similar thing, the Abraises has about people on Yom Kippur. Anything which happens to a person until Yom Kippur was decreed last Yom Kippur. Anything which happens from Yom Kippur and on was decreed this Yom Kippur. So says Reva, it's judged twice. It's judged last Pesach for everything that happens to Pesach, and it's judged this Pesach for everything that happens next Pesach. So that means, on Pesach, the judgment is as follows. The current crop that's growing is judged until it's harvest. And there's also judgment for the next crop, for next year's crop, which will be, which will be planted in Cheshvan. It says Abaye. Therefore, somebody who sees that his early crops are growing well, the early crops are the ones that are planted in Cheshvan. What well, she says is wheat, spelt, things like that. It takes them a long time to ripen, therefore they're planted in Cheshvan. If those are growing well, that means that the decree of the preceding Pesach was a good decree. You should hurry up and plant the things that you could plant now, the things which you plant uh, during Shvan and Adar. So those are, like, for example, Rashi says, the barley, which is, ripens and grows faster, you plant it then. So you see, this is a good time, there's a good decree on crops, you should go plant it now. So even if next Pesach, the coming Pesach, right now, Shvat Adar Nisan, so even if this coming Pesach ends up with a bad decree, at least what grew in the first critical stages will be a good growth. Okay, now the Gemara wants to know who does our Mishnah fit with. Our Mishnah had said that the judgment for all these four things are on the four times that we mentioned. Gemara says that there are four opinions of Tanaim as to when things are judged, and this Mishnah doesn't fit with any of them. Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yesi, and Rabbi Nassan all say differently than our Mishnah. How so? So Gemara quotes of Brisa. First opinion is that of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir says that everybody is everybody and everything. It's all judged on Rosh Hashanah, and it's Din is sealed, signed and sealed on Yom Kippur. So that doesn't fit with our Mishnah, which gives four separate times. Next, opinion is Rabbi Yehuda. He says, everything is judged on Rosh Hashanah, but each one is sealed in its own time. Grain on Pesach, Shuas on fruits, uh, fruits uh, um, Sukkis on water, and people on Yom Kippur. So, that doesn't fit with our mission either, because our mission gave those four times. But those four times, our mission said was the original, the origination of the decree, not the sealing of the decree. So Gemara says, okay, what about Rabbi Yaisi? Rabbi Yaisi says, person is judged every single day for that day, does not have a once a year for the whole year. And the Gemara quotes Rabbi Yaisi's source, which is a passing in that says, "Vatifkidenu lebekarim," that they may you recall him, you consider him every morning. 
Now, the fourth opinion is Rabbi Nosson, and it says the person is judged every moment. Every hour he's judged again. And the same Apostle Kenyov says, In moments you test him. So it means you test the person every moment. So nothing more says, Okay, so maybe we'll try to fit our Tana in with Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda had the same four times as us, but he said those are the times that the decree is sealed. So our Tana was talking about sealing, maybe. So the judge maybe meant sealing. He meant the end of the judgment instead of the beginning of the judgment. So the says, but that can't be, because he said that a person's judgment is Rosh Hashanah. And a person's original judgment is Rosh Hashanah, not the end of his judgment. So it couldn't have been talking about the end of the judgment. So the end of the judgment of a person is on Yom Kippur. So Gemara says there's a fifth opinion, there's a fifth one that's not mentioned in this price, and that's our Mishnah. And that is Tanah Debir Bishmal, and he says that a person is judged four times, uh, well, the world is judged four times, Pesach on grain, Shus on fruits, Sukkot on water, and a person is judged on Shoshana, and his din, his decree, is sealed on Yom Kippur. And that was what Amish is referring to, it's referring to the beginning of the judgment, not the end of the judgment. Now the Gemara briefly Analyzes the machlokes between Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Nasan. Rabbi Yaisi said that a person is judged every day based on the pasuk of Tifkadeinu Lubkarim. Gemara says, why didn't he say that, Rabbi Nasan? Because the pasuk also says, Blurigayim Tifchanenu. So Gemara says, no, because Tifchanenu, the word Bechina does not mean a judgment. It means uh, to look at him, to to test him, but it's not a judgment. So Gemara says, well, Pekida, the pasuk that he brought, also. Is not a judgment. If a tifkidenu the bukam is not a judgment, then that just means Hashem considers him. It doesn't mean he judges him. Gemara says, so you're right. Uh, Rabbi Yisai had a different source. That wasn't a source. The source is actually the pasuk in Malachim that says, "Last is mishpat avdei, mishpat ami Yisrael for yom biyamei." Hashem does judgment of his servant and of the Jewish people every day. That's his source. That's his judgment every day. Now. This pasuk also teaches us other things, which the Gemara introduces now. Rav Chizda says that a king and his people are judged separately. The king goes first, like the pasuk says, "Last is Mishpat Avdei." First, the servant, the one servant that represents all the other ones, Mishpat Am Yisrael, and afterwards the entire Jewish people. What's the reason that the king goes first? Either that the king shouldn't be waiting outside while the people go in, not respectful, or in order that he should take the brunt of the anger and let the people off the hook, try to prevent it from them as much as he can. So the Gemara asks, um, today, we are mispalel all, all the time. We daven for people who are sick, we daven for Tamil Chachamim who are weak. So if the judgment happens only on Rosh Hashanah, why are we davening the rest of the time? So the Gemara says, well, either we're going like Rabbi Yaisi, that says there's judgment every day, or we hold like Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak, who's that? Rabbi Yitzchak says that it's good to, to scream to Hashem, to be mispalel, even if it's not judgment time. Whether it's before Gzardin, after a decree, you can judge, you can cry, and be misspelled anytime you want, and therefore we don't need to daven only on Rosh Hashanah, we can daven all year round. Okay. Now says the Gemara, quoting a Brisa, that the four times of the year we have special practices which help us be successful in that judgment. What are those practices? So Gemara says as follows. Rabbi Huda says, in Rabbi Kiva, on Pesach, we bring a carbon Omer to help us with the judgment of grain. Omer is brought from the barley, which is a grain that grows. Uh, that judgment is on Pesach. On Shavuos, we bring the Shtei HaLechem that helps us with the judgment of the fruits. The two breads, the carbon of the two um, breads, helps us with the uh, judgment of the fruits. Now, what does bread have to do with the fruit? So Rashi brings two approaches, either because the bread allows us to then bring Bikurim, which is our first fruits, which then helps with the judgment of the fruit, or the problem with fruit is that the Eitz Hadas, the tree that was used for the original sin, was a fruit tree, but the fruit of that tree was actually not a fruit. The fruit of that tree was actually wheat. So the Shtei Alechem helps us with fruits because it helps us take off the sin of the Eitz Hadas. Okay, now, moving further, uh, water is judged on Sukkot, therefore we have the Nisach HaMayim, the pouring of water on the Mizbeach, and the Gemara quotes Hashem says, pour water in front of me in order that your rain should be blessed. And in Rosh Hashanah, the entire world is judged, and there Hashem says as follows, he says, say the sections of Malchias, kingship, Zichronos, remembrances, and shofars, the shofars, say all those things on Rosh Hashanah, say Malchias in order to crown me as king upon you, say Zichronos in order that the remembering your activities should come in front of me with goodwill, and do that through the shofar, the shofar is going to bring that up. Now says Rabbi Avo, why do we blow shofar of a ram? So this is my answer is, um, because Akedas Yitzchak, the sacrifice of Yitzchak, 
was replaced with a ram, and we want to recall the merit of Kedas Yitzchak, and also we are considered as if we brought ourselves as a sacrifice by bringing that shofar's ram to a blow. Okay, now the Gemara asks, why do we blow shofar in Rosh Hashanah? He says, what do you mean, why do you blow? The Torah says, blow. The Gemara says, uh, well, no, that's why you would blow a tekiah, but why do you blow a teruah? Why do you blow the choppy sound? The Gemara says, what do you mean? The Torah also says, zechorum teruah, it says to do that. Mar says, no, well, we're asking is why do you do it twice? Once when you're sitting and once when you're standing. Why are there two separate blowing periods? Mar says, that's in order to confuse the Satan, to mess up the Satan, to impede the Satan by showing how much we love mitzvahs, that we do it in multiple ways. Says the Gemara, I've been more, I got it to about the Shofar, Rav Yitzchak says, any Rosh Hashanah, which, any year which you didn't blow on Rosh Hashanah, which that would be because it came out in Shabbos, and therefore we didn't have shofar blowing, you're going to have screaming at the end of it. It's not going to be a good year. And the reason is because we did not impede the Satan, not impede the forces of evil. Since Rav Yitzchak, also any year where we were rush in the beginning, where we were poor, where we treated ourselves like we are, had nothing, and we therefore we were misspelled carefully to Hashem, then we'll be misasheres, but we'll be rich in the end. Like it says, may reishes Hashanah, at Achas Shara. So Meirashis is spelled Meirashis, without an Aleph, Meirashis. If it's poor in the beginning of the year, so then Achris at the end of the year will be something that has Achris, it has a longevity to it, it lasts afterwards. It says Rav Yitzchak further, um, you only judge a person based on his actions at that time, where he is holding in that time. You don't look at what's going on and what he's going to do later. Possibly not even as what he did earlier. And you derived it from the Pasuk about Yishmael, when Yishmael was in the uh, Midbar, the wilderness, and he was dying, so he prayed, and Hashem listened to him and sent a Malach to save him. And all the other Malachim said, Why are you saving him? He's going to end up killing Kaya, so him and his descendants will be murderous. So Hashem said, But now is he Rasha? No, now he's a Tzaddik, and he's judged based on what he's doing now, and therefore he has the right to survive. And therefore he brought up a well for him in the middle of the desert. Says the Gemara further, Rabbi Yitzchak says, there are three things which cause a person's sins to be remembered by Kaddish Baruch Hu. means it, it brings him to judgment and he is considered. One of them is if he walks under a dangerous thing, a wall that's about to fall, then they will judge him and say, is he, is he fitting to survive the situation of the danger that he's in now? Another thing is if he's mispalel too hard. Rashi explains that means that he does something which he is irresponsible and he relies on his tefillah to get him out of it. So they judge him as his tefillah, and is his merit really as good as he thinks? And the third is, if he asks for Hashem to judge between him and his friend, he says, judge between us who's more righteous. Oh, you want to be judged? Okay, we'll judge you, we'll see. Where says the source for that is from Sarah. Sarah, who at the time was called Sarai, when she was upset at Hagar, she said to Avram, Hamasi Yolecha, Yishbar Hashem, Beniyu Venecha. You caused me this problem, Hashem should judge between us. And what ended up happening was that Avram later had to bury Sarah, so you see, she caused herself to be put into judgment. It says Rabbi Yitzchak further, are four things which cause a person's a, a evil decree against a person to be torn up. And they are tzedakah, charity, tzedakah, tefillah, shooting Hashem, changing your name, and shooting a mice, changing your actions. Tzedakah, as it says, but tzedakah, tatzami maves. Tefillah, as it says, crying, that is, it says, Vayitzikol Hashem ben Tzarlehem, and they called out to Hashem in their pain, and he saved them from their distress. We're changing your name, as it says, Sarah Yeshda Chalisuka Shema Sarah, Sarai Ki Sarah Shema. We changed Sarah's name from Sarai to Sarah. And then, Uberachta Yosav, Gam Nasati Mimen Al Chabain. And then she was able to have a child. Changing your activities, like it says, about Ninveh in Yonah, Vayara the Kimas Basayim, and Hashem saw their actions. And Hashem changed the plan about the bad that he planned to do to them. And he did not do it. Some say uh, there's a fifth thing that helps, and that's changing the place where you are. Like it says, Hashem told Avram, go, from your land. And as a result of that, I'll make you into a great nation. So by changing his location, he got a different Gzardin. Tumor says, well, why doesn't the first opinion hold of that? Why does he have a problem with that? Tumor says, that's different. It's not that he was just changing locations because he was going to Eretz Yisrael. The merit of going to Eretz Yisrael is what got the better decree. It says, if it's like further, a person is obligated to go greet his master on Yom Tov. Like it says, Maduat halachas elav hayom lechodesh v'lo Shabbos. The woman of Shunam went to Elisha. And her husband said, why are you going today? It's not the Rosh Chodesh, it's not Shabbos. So you see, the Rosh Chodesh and Shabbos, you're supposed to go. So on a special day, you are supposed to go greet your teacher, your mentor, and your Rebbe. It says, further, a person is supposed to purify himself for Yom Tov. Like it says, you should not touch a carcass. 
So the Gemara says there's a Bryce that supports this as well. Uh, when Avlas unless you go, says the Bryce, uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means you're not allowed to touch a carcass? Mm, why would you not be allowed to touch a carcass? Only Kehanim are not allowed to become Tomei. So Kehanim are warned against becoming Tomei, but Jews are not. Because the Bryce says, it's actually a Kabbalah Chaimer. Kohanim are warned against a, a strong Tuma, Tumas Mace, and that doesn't apply to a regular Yisro. So, if they're not warned against Tumas Nevela, certainly Yisro shouldn't be warned against Tumas Nevela. So, what's this Pasuk for of an Evlas and Lissigo? To tell you, you should not be Tumay uh, from having touched a carcass on a regal, on Yemtif. Okay, now the Gemara gets into the judgment itself. The Gemara says, Rav Chris Budai says, Rav Yechanan, there are three books that are opened in front of Hashem and Rosh Hashanah. One is the wicked, Rosham Gemur, one of Tzadikim, the righteous, and one of Benanim, those that are in between. Rashi says 50 50. Those that are in the book of the righteous are written, signed, sealed immediately for life. Those that are, that are evil are signed, sealed immediately for death. Those that are in between are left in suspense. Their judgment is suspended until Yom Kippur. If they do well, then they merit, then they're written down for life, and if not, then they're written down for death. It says of Avin, you have a couple of sources of this from the Pesukim. Torah says in Tehillim, Yimachu mi Sefer, it should be erased from the Sefer. That refers to those that are wicked, that are being destroyed based on the Sefer. Chayim, that refers to those that are Tzadikim. V'am Tzadikim, Ali Kasevu, the last phrase, V'am Tzadikim, Ali Kasevu, not written in the book, that's those that are not written yet because they are Benanim, they're in between. Menachem Yitzchak has another Pasuk for that. Im ayin mechenina misifach asher kasafta. If not, erase me from the book that you wrote. Mechenina, erase me, that's Rishayim that are erased from the world. Misifach, it should be in your book. Your book, that's Tzadikim. Asher kasafta, that refers to that they are going to be written, but they're not written yet. Those are Benanim that are still waiting for Yom Kippur until their judgment is passed completely. Now the Gemara talks about the judgment that's going to happen in the great day of reckoning in the future when Om Haba Arrives. And Moses Bishamai says that there will three there will be three groups then. The tzaddikim will be written for eternal life. The Sham will be written for um Gehenim. Um like it says Rabbi Mishani Admas offer Yakitsu. Um Elo Khai Ulam Va Elo Lakharpos Uladiron Olam. Now the the in between the Benonim will go down to Gehenim and they will pop up. There'll be a little shouting and screaming and crying, but it won't take them too long. Like it says, will clean them and pure them like purifying silver and gold. It takes a fire. Not comfortable, but it can happen. So Chana also said about this Hashem, Hashem brings death and life. And he also puts those in between. So, Mamis is the death. Machaya is life. Marshall brings them down. Vial brings them back up. That's the way they go down and come back up. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.